skinny, you know, 160 pound wet, you know, soaking wet. But um, they asked me if I'd been taking the HGH supplement. <laughs> which is human growth hormone. I'm like, oh, well, I've never gone down that route, but... Well, I don't know. Do you like interactions with other human beings? <laughs> um... Today's video is sponsored by you the Room Sixers who have joined the Patreon page or purchased some of my music. Because of you, the videos will get better, and eventually, some cool things will be coming uh, your way. Welcome to Room Six, the channel dedicated to the local Las Vegas music scene and the people that make it, including me. I'm Josh, and today's guest is taking a break from his first ever self-produced, self-recorded, and full-length album to drop into Room Six for a chat. Starting off their career strong in 2018 by co-headlining the House of Blues, his band Hidden Scars has been around the Vegas metal scene for quite some time, but thanks to COVID, my guest decided to relocate his recording studio to his birthplace, Mission Valley, Montana. With a history of combining elements of metal and industrial electronic and prog rock musical genres while challenging industry norms, I'm looking forward to seeing how where this interview goes, so please welcome to the channel, Joel Floyd, west of Hidden Scars. Hey Joel! Hey Joshua, thank you for having me, brother. How you doing? Unbelievable. How are you? Right on. I'm great, man. I'm great. I'm just uh, just getting it in, man. Just just you know, just busting ass on the hustle, you know, trying to adapt to the curve, you know. Nice. I love oh, that. I like mug, the cave. The I like, way, dude. That is a great <laughs> mug. I need to get me one of those with with hidden scars on it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, I, I can't get you one of those, but uh, if you want, if you want a Room 6 mug uh, or a shirt, uh, room6.shop is my online store. Um, I'm going to take a quick second. I just want to show the back. I never show the back of the shirt. Oh, yeah. Please do, man. That's awesome. Nice. So, yeah. Basically, it says, you know, support lo uh, Las Vegas local music, but support local music wherever you are. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Back to you. Uh, first off, congrats on the FNX endorsement deal. Uh, I agree with you that musicians especially metal musicians are athletes. How did that whole thing come about? Uh, they contacted me. They, they checked out my uh, Instagram uh, profile, the, the Hidden Scars Instagram, and uh, I guess they liked what they saw. You know, I got a couple up there, uh, me working out on the bag and whatnot, and just kind of, you know, um, I guess some, something about the, uh, the, the photo gallery on, on the Hidden Scars Instagram appealed to them, and they reached out to me. So, you know, and their stuff is great. You know, I've been... I've been getting jacked, you know, <laughs> been working hard. <laughs> Huge. Taking their, yeah, taking their supplements. Yeah, yeah. It's funny. If, I posted a picture a few weeks ago and a friend of, friend of mine asked me, and I'm sure it was a joke because I'm still like freaking skinny, you know, 160 pound wet, you know, soaking wet. But um, they asked me if I'd been taking the HGH supplement, <laughs> which is human growth hormone. I'm like, oh, well, I've never gone down that route, but... If the side yeah. effects aren't too horrible, like if I'm, my nuts aren't going to shrink and make me grow tits, maybe I'll consider it. I don't know. <laughs> well, I don't know. Do you like interactions with other human beings? Um, Jeez, that's a tough one, man. Um, only as much as necessary. <laughs> no, I, I've heard <laughs> I, I've heard some – like there's a reason why, you know, a lot of sports don't allow it. So, Oh, yeah. But uh, we digress. We're here for music, so. Um, <clears throat> but no, I, I, I've been working out, um, especially with quarantine. I've been, like, I, I gave myself a couple weeks, put on the COVID-19, as they say. And, yeah. and, and then I, I was like, okay, this is stupid. Uh, the, you know, my gym, is, the gym is open, and I, I'm smart enough to, you know, do, follow all the procedures. And so um, I've been hitting it, and um, I don't have an endorsement, unfortunately, so I, I'm limited on my, my supplement budget there. Sure. Yeah. And it's just, you know, it's supplements, you know, they, they give me uh they give yeah. me a huge discount and then, uh, you know, send me some little freebies here and there and then give me a, a cut off anything I'm able to sell to some of my friends and fans, you know, so it's, it's a pretty cool deal, but yeah, man, like, like the whole, the whole fitness health side of, of being a musician is something that gets overlooked a lot because most, 
most people probably think I'm, you know, still strung out on drugs, you know, having coke orgies all the time, and like, you know, like the regular, you know, <laughs> wannabe rock star, you know, persona. It, it's, that's just not the case, man. I'm, I'm getting a little older, you know, I'm, I'm getting into my late thirties now and, and you got to stay in shape to do music, especially, especially something as, as demanding and, and energetic as, as heavy metal music, performing metal music on stage is almost a sport in and of itself, you know? So you really gotta, gotta watch yourself. You can't be high and drunk all the time, you know? Yeah. Well, well, like Dave Grohl said, like, like Dave, Dave, Dave Grohl said, when you start bringing the whiskey bottle to the stage, <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's a sign like maybe it's time to take a take a take stock on them all right oh, yeah. uh moving on and that was cool you're going to be really <laughs> yeah so much was cool in the 90s um right <laughs> your vocals can be really aggressive and guttural How, how's the uh, montana weather affecting your singing is the laid-back atmosphere kind of influencing your, your songwriting or you have any problems with with the cold Oh man, well, as, as far as laid back atmosphere, man, I, I still have so much toxicity, you know, built up in me uh, from from my last few Vegas experiences. And, and honestly, even by me not being there, stuff still piles up just from just the aftermath uh, and, and, uh, and uh, you know, shrapnel of past personal relationships blowing up uh so i got plenty to write about uh but as far as the, the physical uh state of the atmosphere here is i'm really not noticing any kind of difference to my vocals man i still you know i still feel like i, I improve a little bit every day you know i always try to get a little more range a little more power a little more control a little more pitch control you know in, in my voice and uh i've really never and I, you know, I've toured around the entire country. I've been up to the highest and lowest elevations in the states, and you know, dry, moist, wet, uh, cold, hot. You know, so um, never really, never really affected me that bad. Fortunately, um, <clears throat> it's always been pretty good. Right on. Um, yeah, because my, myself, I've I've gone down almost almost to hard rock when it came to singing, but quickly discovered. You need, you need, it takes time to develop that kind of really, you know, aggressive guttural sound. And I, I just, I just didn't have it there. Sure. But I, w I was wondering though, you know, does the cold affect it or anything like that? Cause you're, you're coming from Vegas to that. So. Yeah. Not too bad. And, you know, when you're in the recording studio, it's, it, I mean, there's never any like, you know, if, if I'm like trying to record vocals outdoors right now in the, in the snow blizzard on, you know, on top <laughs> of a mountain, that would be probably pretty horrendous, but luckily I got, you know, heat and everything in here, so <laughs> it's a uh, pretty controlled environment. Let's shoot a '90s music video. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, man. Right on. Um, I know you're flying solo right now, following the, the Trent Reznor school of thought a little, and the band's gone through some personnel changes over the years. Uh, is there a regular stable of musicians that you'll be calling on once shows are a thing again? Um, I have auditioned several drummers i got a bass player who's pretty much on board uh, i've tried out a couple guitar players as well um right now it's just kind of like it's really easy going and slow moving whoever kind of wants to get into the recording studio with me and collaborate with me you know on this on this new album because you know we're adapting to the curve there really are no live shows to speak of at this at this point in time you know touring is definitely not an option so um when the time comes i got the guns to call you know to to really hit the road and you know hit the ground running uh until then like i said i'm just kind of taking it slow adapting and making sure i you know write and record the best music possible and i i love to collaborate with other musicians you know there, there'll be a few guest spots and collaborative writing uh coming up on this this next album awesome i look forward to hearing it and uh, i would love it to uh review the album once it's all done in its entirety no thank you that'd be great yeah cool uh now one look at the latest news section on your website shows that you're not shy about putting your personal life into your music mm -hmm. is there anything that's off limits when it comes to your songwriting absolutely not um other than 
explaining the songwriting is the only thing that's kind of off limits. Uh, you know, I like to I like to put in the the background sometimes. You know, because people want to know. You know what I mean? People people want to know where those lyrics come from, and they and they want to know you know what i'm doing with my life that that influences these songs that you know the whole um the whole like mysterious you know rock star behind the curtains mystique kind of uh persona uh went out the door a long time ago once social media started dominating and everyone's privacy was abolished you know so now it's kind of like you, you know you want to communicate with your fans and listeners you kind of have to do it on all levels and show them that you're also human and you also have emotions and stress and anxiety and problems in your life and you go through depression you have you know toxic relationships and and, and so so on and so forth you know so um but yeah when it comes to the songs i also really like to let the listener um decide what they think it means you know right on yeah um i was i have to say it was refreshing and also a little bit like Oh damn, he went there <laughs> when I was going through and you were uh, detailing kind of well. This song is about this this ex and, and all that happened sure. in the false claims. And I was just like, you know what? Yeah, I'm good on you as a songwriter myself. Good on you. Sure. But um, I don't know if I could. I don't know if I could put my dirty laundry out quite that much. But then again, yeah, I've been fortunate. My dirty laundry is fairly clean. <laughs> oh, mine mine is fucking filthy, man. And you know that's. <laughs> That's the only way I, I have to cleanse it. It's like music is like my, my purge, you know, it's, it's definitely my, right. my cleansing fire. So uh, that's, that's what I use to do it. There's a song name or, or an album name, Cleansing Fire. Yeah, that, that would be a good one. Yeah, I'm, I'm, actually, I'm actually kind of, uh, you know, shuffling around possible album titles right now. So I might, I might actually put that on the list. I was going to ask actually if you if you had one nailed down yet. So, cool. Um, um, so far, the running number one running candidate is um, um, all will be revealed in the end. Ooh. So we'll see. Oh. The, the end hasn't come yet, but I'm still getting all this backlash. It's some crazy stuff has been going on in Vegas. Things that um, that I wouldn't be at liberty to talk about just because they're too too personal for other people you know what i mean and i don't i don't want to tread in in their territory some very you know very painful things have been going on down there and i kind of wish i was there to kind of you know help pull people through um right but unfortunately i have to watch from the outside in huh apparently one of my cameras just froze on me awesome nice is it run on a wi-fi uh no i turned the wi-fi off it, it's just the phone it's a, it's a phone but uh -huh. there's there's no reason why it should be freezing all right i had to close it out so no idea where that camera ends but that's hey that's why i have two hell yeah <laughs> uh oh shoot unfortunately that's the one that that camera is also recording the audio <laughs> oh, so no. you know what i'm gonna do it's okay no it's okay like i'll make it work but i'm gonna get yeah. out of this and just just use just just record the audio on this there's no no need for three camera angles on this cool no problem uh, okay. yeah and i'll have the and... uh the audio on on the thing i send you as well here so yeah and so what i what i end up doing is going in and, and doing a little audio chicanery and figure out what's what am i what what's the best overall you know what can i punch in you know i don't have to tell you yeah, yeah um so all right speaking of shows you're known for putting on a theatrical show um but I have to wonder, when's the Acoustic Children's album coming? <laughs> the Acoustic Children? I'm sorry. <laughs> Please elaborate. I'm just fucking with you. I'm just being silly. Okay, yeah, that, that went way over my head. No, I love, I love playing acoustic, man. I, st I strip it down and uh, do acoustic shows a, a lot. In fact, uh, you know, when, when I was in Vegas, I was not only working behind the scenes as a stagehand and, you know, sound engineer producer out of a recording studio but i was also performing quite regularly in the different little casino lounges and restaurants and places like that and i'd always you know strip it down just me and an acoustic guitar you know and a lot of hidden scars material surprisingly uh can be communicated through 
just one voice and one acoustic guitar. Um, it sounds a lot different, but but it can happen, you know. And it's it's really actually it's a beautiful thing to to uh, see what happens when you take a song that's you know seven synth layers, two guitars, a full drum kit, a bass, five harmonizing vocals, and all the screaming, growling, and all this production behind it. And really strip it down to nothing but one voice and one guitar and find the, the purity in the song through that means, you know, it's a really interesting thing. I, I definitely believe that and understand. One song on my, my last album has seven guitar parts because, you know, it was all self, it was all me playing on the instruments. So, of course, nice. seven guitar tracks. And yeah. I was, I, I told the, um, and the engineer is actually also uh, my bassist in another thing, but he he played uh, he played drum kit because at the time I just didn't feel confident. Uh, and uh, he and I said, "Hey, what does it sound like if we put all the guitar tracks together?" And it, it was so like nothing you can replicate. No, no, no one person with I don't care how many pedals you have, no one person can replicate this because it's literally seven different riffs that I played, seven different solos all at the same time. But oh, wow. uh, I, I, I did, a, I did a, a TikTok live stream where I'm like, I want to play that song because I like the song. But how the hell? <laughs> yeah, dude. That's awesome. So acoustic, acoustic is, it's why uh, when I was doing the Room 6 interviews before quarantine, when I was doing them in my house, you would see musicians up here playing acoustic, no matter what genre they played. They generally played acoustic. Maybe the bass player was playing through a little heart key amp. Drummer might bring a little kick, little, uh, little cajon or, or kick drum or something. And, and it's, I wanted to say, show, I wanted to show the, the fans of that band. Here's what we sound like when we're not plugged in and we're, you know, we're stripped down to our essence. Some bands really brought it. Cause you can tell like they write on acoustic, no matter what their finished product is, a pop punk band sounded amazing on acoustic. Whereas another band that was metal came in and was just like, mm, you figured this out for this one show, didn't you? For this one interview. Oh yeah, yeah no. Absolutely. And too many, I think, too many musicians, too many musicians hide behind the the, the buzz, you know, hide behind the electronics. Oh totally. Um, and totally. that's something that I I had to come to, I had to come to grips with that myself. I'm I'm in the process now of kind of reintroducing myself to my stuff with either acoustic or or just the AB uh, switch pedal on my guitar because I'm I was getting I, I became a toe tapper, you know. A little yeah. tap dancer on the, the, the pedal board. Oh, yeah. So, all right. Um, yeah, that's I'd like to awesome dig into... To have automated effects, man. Automated effects are great. <laughs> yeah. Be and wide. especially with the software out there now, the recording software out, uh, that's out there now, you can have any amp you want, and it's going to sound pretty much like the real thing. Oh, totally, man. Yeah. And you can you, automate yeah. the effects to come in at the particular time mm -hmm. in the song and everything, as long as your drummer can play to a click track. Let's see if I, I'll show you my drum kit. Let's see if it'll, oh no, it doesn't, <laughs> the audio's not working. Right now. I see. That's how I play the drums. I thought maybe if I nice. plugged it in, it would sync up with the audio in my recording interface and give you a little sample of uh, how I'm doing the drums here. But yeah, it's all programmed, man. It's all. Sorry, uh, mine plugs in too. Oh, sweet. Right on. Cool, dude. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I like the album collection back there. Santa was nice uh, to me. In the... Yeah, no, those are great, bro. I have, uh, I have a similar uh, vinyl cover on my wall, actually, too. I don't know if you can see it up there, but it's, it's Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon. It's right there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I got it right there. Uh, I can't really, really see it, but yeah, yeah. It's really, really dark, so you can't tell what it is. But I, I, I yeah. promise you I'm telling nothing but the truth here. Oh, I believe you. I, you can't see it. It's it's out of reach. But I have a stack higher than I can go on screen of, of vinyl that's not all mine. But um, these, I, I've set up the nails holding them in such a way I can just slide them out and change them out whenever I want. Oh, sweet. Hell yeah. Here's, yeah. here's one. And it, it, here's one for the books. Since, since you mentioned earlier, one of my, uh, one of my favorites of all time. Sorry, it's not picking up on camera. What is that? Yeah. A little nice. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's undeniable there's an influence there a little bit. Yeah, that's awesome, dude. I'm glad you heard that. I'm glad you were able to, to pick oh, that yeah. out for sure. 
Hard not to, yeah. Awesome. Um, all right, I'd like to I'd like to dig into a little bit of your musical past, if you don't mind, with uh, this question. What would you say was your earliest musical um, influence? Like, what was that sound or that band or that genre that was like, I want to do that? Oh, man, that's so tough. Um, my mom, when I was a baby, would play me uh, all kinds of classical symphonic orchestra stuff that really stuck in my head. Uh, I think that really carried on through the rest of my life. But she also played Elvis. So that was another <laughs> another side of the spectrum. She loved Elvis, loved the Beatles. Uh, she showed me the, the Doors movie. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure I watched Pink Floyd The Wall with my dad for the first time when I was six or seven years old. Um, then... Uh, I believe it was, yeah, I want to say it was definitely, um, I got into video games, violent video games, um, mainly Mortal Kombat, and then they put out a movie, and I fell in love with the movie, and then that's how I discovered music, because they released the motion picture soundtrack to that movie, and that included such artists as Typo Negative, KMFDM, Napalm Death, Bile, all this awesome like edm like you know electronic industrial like just awesome mashup of everything from you know edm to death metal on that album it's a great eclectic very dynamic album um so that that really got me started and then after that david lynch lost highway came out and it was all downhill from there man <laughs> right on uh, from earliest musical influence, what are you currently listening to to kind of like get you jazzed up and, and get you in the mood to create new music? What's your daily uh, like go to? As far as as far as inspiration to create music, um, I mean, I love these guys a lot. I'm very inspired by their music, but I wouldn't say the uh, the band Ghost. Uh, but I wouldn't say mm -hmm. necessarily their music and influences or inspires me to create my music. Uh, these days, I'm really trying to find a place within within my mind through through different practices, different means and different, um, uh, you know, different levels of discipline to find like a constant flow of inspiration to where I can kind of like take the life experiences that just stress the hell out of me that I write music about and find, find the good in them, find, find where along those experiences did I learn something and did it make me stronger? And, and that's, that's what I base the music around. Um, as far as listening to music these days it is all over the place, man. Uh, my, my latest favorite, I've been listening to quite a bit of Gary Newman lately. Oh he's, wow, he's cool. Yeah, his his more recent stuff is really cool, man. It's it's not like the the song that made him famous. You know what I mean? It's <laughs> mm -hmm. he's getting deep these days, man. It's, it's really <laughs> cool stuff. Right on. Yeah. Um. All right. So from there, I'd like to dig into a little more of your recent past. What is, in your opinion, your favorite show memory? Could be good, could be bad, could be, I, I, you know, he went to jail or whatever. <laughs> oh, man, the, the debut, the, the first show, man, the debut Hidden Scars show at House of Blues, um, co-headlining under Nocturnal Affair. Um, it was the most... Hey, I had them on the show. Those guys are awesome. Oh, sweet. Very cool, man. Right on. Yeah. Shout out to Nocturnal Freaking Affair. Freaking Brandon. Man. I miss those guys. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, brother. Um, but right before we went on stage, everything that could possibly have gone wrong did. And everything that worked in rehearsal the day before the show did not work on that stage at the House of Blues. And it all went to hell because um, I have a very involved show set up. I, gotta, I, gotta, I set up all my own lighting. Uh, I sync it to the program that gets the click track going for the drummer to keep time uh, that triggers the lights and then I also have a video animation wall that syncs to the music and the lights so they're all in sync together and it all has to run properly off of one system that I have to control manually to at least to start and stop you know if something goes wrong in the show I gotta pause everything 
at the right time and make sure I get it back on at the exact split second uh, at the right time. And so, you know, we, we lost about eight minutes in the show um, because of, of setup issues, uh, cables going wrong, uh, you know, computer laptop computer crashing, um, you know, lights having to be kind of reconfigured because they were moved from one location to another, and I guess they just don't like that. Or there's some kind of crazy voodoo, like dark forces working against us on the House of Blues stage from all that those symbols they have over the stage, all that spiritual stuff. I don't know, man, but it was it was weird, and we had to um, we had to cut out. Uh, we were gonna do this really cool like like surprise collaboration of a Deftones cover song to close out the show, and we just weren't able to do it because it, the the problems literally ate up seven minutes, which was exactly the time that song would have lasted. <laughs> so it worked out kind of perfect in that sense, but for whatever reason, we were not meant to do that cover song collaboration thing. So someday. Someday we'll do it. That's the one that got away, huh? Yeah, yeah. But they all do, you know, eventually. Then they come yeah. back around again. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it is hard to, to top, you know, starting at the House of Blues. I, it's, I've, I've done that stage. It's amazing. Yeah. Uh, but then you had to go and complicate matters. So good job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. Yeah, you know, it's it was it was an honor and a, and a, and a privilege. And, you know, I could... Couldn't have been more fortunate to, to bring Hidden Scars out the gate the way we did. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to let something as trivial as a world pandemic screw it up for me. So I've only had, <laughs> I've only had Hidden Scars alive for, for just about three years now. So it's just the beginning for us, you know. It's got to yeah. push and persist somehow, some way, despite everything that's happening in the, in the world right now, you know. Right on. Is there is there anybody right now that you're considering their their hidden scars, their band members? As far as who now? Is there I guess what I'm asking is, does Hidden Scars currently have an actual lineup that's going to be announced when this record comes out? Oh, um yeah, well like like I said, not not officially yet because I've been collaborating with, with one guy who I mean he he prefers the bass, but he's actually well versed in many instruments. I'm trying to get him on board as like a co co writer, co co producer for the the latter half of this album that has yet to be written. Um, and like I said, I've I've tried out a couple drummers and a handful of guitar players, and I'm still uh, still trying to see you know who's going to make the final cut, who's who's going to be there, ready and raring to go, and to make the sacrifice when the time comes to really do this thing full time because you know everyone will say they can and say they will uh but then it comes down to it and it's like well come on let's hop in the tour bus we're playing five nights a week and we're traveling around the country and uh it's going to be just barely enough to feed us and keep gas in in the vehicle uh you know to start out with it's a, it's a huge huge step it's a lot of work it's a lot of sacrifice it ain't pretty it doesn't smell good and, and a lot of guys will not leave their families and their jobs and everything else they have at home to, to go take a risk like that. So see what happens, man. They're out there somewhere. They might be right here in a little small town, Montana, just waiting for me to pull them on board. You never know. <laughs> right on. Yeah. Um, moving away from the, pa uh, the past, I guess, is there any... Is there any dream gear? Like, I want to talk gear for a little bit with you. Is there any dream gear that you're hoping to one day to get? Oh man, um, so much, so much. I'm I'm building a recording studio right now, and I'm still kind of at my uh, beginning stages of of skill level as far as it comes to uh, you know recording, mixing, producing. Um, slowly climbing my way into the intermediate stage. Um, but actually, I just, it's funny, I'm wearing these headphones. I really just made a really, really good investment, I feel, uh, at least for me, uh, being in the position I'm in right now is uh, the Steven Slate. Um, um, they're pretty good, man. They're, they're awesome. They're the VSX um, uh, modeling headphones. 
So you go into the soft, the headphones themselves are great, you know, they fit nice and tight, they're comfortable, I don't get any ear sweat or freaking pinches from my glasses or anything when I'm wearing them, and then uh, you go into the software and it models all these different sounds after professional uh, mastering rooms and recording studios and different he headphone sets, and there's even a couple car stereo simulators. So it's really great technology for checking your mixes which is the number one most beneficial thing for me right now, working on this album and, and, and learning as I go. So um, as far as any other gear that I wish I had, I mean, dude, I mean, a mixing console, mic pre's, tube mic pre's, synthesizers, uh, you name it, man. You know, more guitars, more baritone guitars, more seven string guitars, you know. Um, I got, I got pretty lucky with the whole COVID thing. Uh, I got a lot of money from, from the government because of it. And I was able to, uh, get a lot of my dream gear covered that way. <laughs> but, uh, right on. So your answer is more, more, just more of everything, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can, it's, it's so impossible to narrow it down to one or two or three or f even four or five. Yeah. Huge little, know, or, you know, little gear man, whore. Man. A real <laughs> drum kit would be nice. That would be cool. That would be, yeah, that would be a lot of fun. Yeah. I'd like one too, but I, I live with, you know, my wife and kid and my in-laws. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I, th this was the compromise, was the the one that I could plug headphones into. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Those are great. Uh, too, man. Yeah. If you get the right, right set, uh, it would be awesome. Cool. I got two more questions for you, and then you're done. Cool. Um, first one, from the highs of dream gear to the lows of losing gear. You ever lose any gear at a gig? Oh, man. Um, not so much at a gig that I can think of, but one time I went on tour, and I was living in Chicago, and my, my apartment doubled as our rehearsal space. And I had a couple roommates. One was a heroin junkie. And... Uh. Uh, yeah, so I, I had my, my PA system and uh, a couple guitars and some mics and a lot of stuff that uh, went on tour for two months, came back to Chicago, and everything was gone, and the guy was gone. I haven't seen him since. Uh, you know, he's somewhere. I, he, he's probably dead by now, for all I know, man. But if, if he's not, then, you know, he's got a good curb stop waiting for him next time I see him. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, that oh, yeah, that was that was a bad experience. I don't think, but you know, it's it's who you put yourself around. You know what I mean? I, I made the choice of bringing people like that around me. You know, yeah. live and I, learn. I, right? I was that person for a while. Not enough to rip anyone off, but I was heavy into drugs for a while. You know, I never stole from anybody, but I got I got deep into that. You know, the chemicals and uh, you know, put myself around people that couldn't give a shit about any other life, even their own. You know, Jeez. almost lost my arm. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I almost lost the end of my thumb. Oh, wow. uh, but <laughs> we're, uh, well, I deserved it. I was being done with a table saw. So, you know, yeah, I deserved it too, man. I was shoving needles in there, you know? <laughs> All right. Which leads perfectly into the last question. You made it. Yay. Uh, <laughs> okay. So whenever you get back to shows, Whatever we, you know, that's a thing with a crowd. Suppose some young kid comes up to you and is just like, Mr. West, how do I sing like you? <laughs> what do you, what's a, what is one piece of advice you would like to give to you when you started out or, or that you wish somebody had given you when you started out in music? Oh, man. Um... <laughs> Don't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of, Kind of wish I had dived a little deeper into the, the marketing and production side of the music industry sooner in life. I was really focused on the performance side, you know, and that that turned out to be very beneficial to me. But I kind of wish I had uh, been able to find a little more balance and not as much just uh, I was all about just performing and partying, you know. Uh, playing the show, getting the chicks, doing the drugs, drinking the booze, waking up the next day, doing it all over again. And I really wish I had been more of a geek about it and spent more time on the computer, 
figuring out algorithms and learning the math and science of sound waves and how they travel and perform and things like that because then I would be a lot better at it now. So yeah, but definitely. I don't regret anything either. <laughs> it was all worth it. <laughs> so, so to you new music musicians out there, have the fun, but take the time to figure out why you're doing it uh, for you know, as a business. And, and if not, find somebody who can do it for you. And pay them. Uh, Joel, I want to thank you for coming on Room Six. Thank you so very much, and thank you for watching. Anything you want to plug right now or anything you want to say to the fans? Yeah, check out uh, the latest single we just dropped, uh, Cyber Psycho, influenced and, uh, um, you know, inspired by the by the new game, uh, Cyberpunk 2077. Uh, I did it with my boy Blind. It's a collab. He, he did all the music. I did all the vocals. We, we put it out there. Check it out. Right on. All right. Well, like he said, go check it out. Remember to be amazing. We'll see you next time in Room 6. Say bye. Thanks, Joshua. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed and that you click the links down in the description for all of Hidden Scars' social media and all their music, including their latest single. While you're down there, please click the link for all of my social media for Room 6, including my Patreon and where you can buy my CDs and TikTok and all the other things. I really appreciate it. In the meantime, if you want to see more videos like this, please click up here. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, it does make a difference. Please click down here and don't forget to ring the bell. Remember to be amazing, and we'll see you next time in Room 6.